So if our you or I design is supposed to be nouns, where do verbs come in? In the case of verbs, we're talking about HTTP verbs. And these verbs can be easily matched to the create, read, update, and delete that we're probably used to when dealing with things like database data. So if we take our resource endpoint, like customers, we know that if we do a get, it's going to return a list of those customers. If we post a new customer to that endpoint, it's going to create a new customer. If we put a collection of customers to this endpoint, it will do a batch update of those customers. And if it, we try to issue a delete against that resource, it's going to give us an error because we cannot delete the entire list of customers. Conversely, if we issue these same verbs against the item collection itself, it's going to do something a little different. So if we do a get, it's going to get that individual item for us. If we do a post, it's going to give us an error because we can't post a brand new item to an existing item. If we do a put, it will update that item. And if we do a delete, it will delete that item. But what should you return from those verbs as you encounter them? In these cases, we're going to look at those same verbs, but figure out what we have to return back to the client so the client knows what to do with them. So in the case of get, it should be pretty obvious. The customer's endpoint returns a list of those customers. A get to the item endpoint is going to return just the individual item that the user is pointed at. If we post, like we talked about before, to the customers with the data that represents what is a customer, it'll create a new item, assuming it's all correct. And we should return from that post a new version of the item that was inserted. Not only that the creation happened, but a formatted object that represents that new item. And the reason we do that is sometimes part of that creation process is setting things like default properties and generating the key that they're going to need and things like that. So returning them that brand new object is very useful for them to be able to consume what is really the last version of the object as it existed on the server, which is just a moment ago when we created it. If we attempt to post to an individual item, because we can't post to an item like we talked about a minute ago, we should return a status code, and that status code should be an error status code probably a 400, in that the user of the API has done something incorrect. In the case of put, if we take a collection of updatable objects and put them to the customer's endpoint, it's going to attempt to update them all and then return a status code to say whether it succeeded or not. But if we do a put to the item resource, it will return the updated item because it makes sense to return an individual item that was updated. And it may have been updated with more than just the data that was sent to the server. It could include things like the last updated date or updated related keys. And so you always want to return that updated item. In the case of delete, because we can't delete the entire list of customers, we should return a status code that is an error status code when a delete is done on the resource of customers. But if we delete on an individual item, we should return a status code of whether you were able to delete that individual item. Let's see how this works. I'm going to pop over to Fiddler. I have a little service running locally that I'm going to do some testing on. So we can see this. I've got an API here for games. And I've got just an identifier to represent the ID of one of the games. And if I issue a get against it, the result is going to be, let's look at the raw first. The result is going to be a 200, so a good status code. And there's some headers that we'll talk a bit more about later. And then we actually get the object that we requested. If we look at the same thing with out the identifier, we're still getting that 200 result, but the raw data that we're requesting is actually a set of information, and here is the collection of the different results that we wanted to return. So this is going to return us the collection of games that we requested. In both cases, we did a get. The only difference was whether we were going after an individual game, like we were here, with games 2, 
or whether we were going over the entire collection. In that same way, we could take this and change the verb, and let's change it to a put so we can update an item. Now for us to update an item, we're going to need to do a couple of things in our API. Our API should ex expect certain things, like a content type. The content type is going to tell it what the format of the request body is, and again, we're going to send it a version of our formatted object. And in this case, we're going to use JSON, because that's what it's been returning to us. So I'm going to tell it the content type is application JSON, and then we can go ahead and actually paste in, in the body of the request, the data we want to update. So let's go ahead and update the second item, and I'll, let's just go get that item here. Go back to our composer. If you're not that familiar with Fiddler, there's a, a course of mine here in the Pluralsight library that covers Fiddler that you might want to look at. But we're just going to paste that whole object that we got from the server originally, and I'm just going to change the name here to Final Fantasy the 5th edition. I'm going to be putting this request up, and I've told it the type of data that I'm going to be giving it. And when I execute this, you can see this came back as a 200. It succeeded. And if we look at the raw result, it not only told us, hey, this succeeded, but here is the new result that was on the server. See, the data that's being sent back includes that fifth edition, that change I just made to it, and every subsequent request now for that same object. Let's drag this over to Composer, which will copy that request so we can re-execute it. We can see now that we've got 5th edition, because that is now what is being stored on the server for us. So simply by changing the type of verb you're using, those same endpoints can be used to do different sort of operations. And in this way, the URIs themselves remain fairly simple and easy for users of your API to get while maintaining a lot of this different behavior for your API.